You should know that when I was five, my father put a violin in my hands. A violin that I played for almost 20 years, both alone and with the orchestra of the conservatory. I remember that our teacher, to make us love, enjoy and understand classical music, made us listen to the Carnival of the Animals, that is a music composition, some way ironic, composed in 1886 by Camille Sanson, a famous French pianist and composer. The composition consists of 14 short tracks, and each of them is inspired by an animal and its characteristics. There are the chickens, reproduced by the obsessive and rapid sounds of violins and piano. There is the elephant, whose weight and slowness are simulated by the deep sound of a double bass. And there is also a cuckoo, simulated by a clarinet. But among all the animals, the thread that I used to love and that I still love more than any other, it was Aquarium, inspired and dedicated to all those animals that float in fresh and calm waters. And that, by the way, you are listening right now. How beautiful. And guess what? Just by coincidence, water is today's subject. In fact, after offering in the previous episode a general overview about digital glues, today we will focus on water-based digital glues. We will address their chemical features, then watching closer the benefits that they promote, technically, aesthetically, and last but not least, environmentally. I am Davide Trentini, and this is Apparently Invisible Chemistry in Ceramics. Let's start by saying that in ceramic, the water-based digital system is a very important topic of interest. We could say that it's a challenge since the ceramic industry has been working for some time in this direction, facing several and different problems. However, today it seems that technical problems and limits of both application machines and products, such as inks and glues, are over. And so the time is ripe for a final spread of this technology that surely offers several benefits on different levels such as technical, technical and environmental. But let's start as usual from the beginning and leaving aside digital printers, we focus on what concerns us more closely by immediately making a list of the most important components of water-based digital glue. Chemically speaking, water-based digital glues can be generally considered as organic polymers and inorganic components, when present, in water and polar solvents. Their chemical nature, unlike that of solvent-based digital glues, is firstly marked by the elimination of those non-polar components that help to spread pollutants and bad odors in the atmosphere. But we will see it later. Their composition is generally made of 35% of water, 45-55% of polar solvent and resins, 10-20% of organic components. Among those elements, resins are definitely responsible for the binding power that is required to fix the grit. You also need to know that these glues develop their action not only between the granules of the grit, but also between the grit and the layers of the tile support. And the binding action takes place after the solvent has been partially absorbed by the ceramic support, and at the same time, once it has evaporated due to the high temperatures of the tile. Good. After this short introduction, let's start now our journey through the benefit that water-based digital glues can promote, of course also making a comparison, when possible, with solvent-based glues. The most important benefit is for sure the reduction of polluting emissions. And the problem of atmospheric emissions is one of the most important issues by chance that has been for some time under the attention of law markers, industries and institutional analysis. And in this regard, the parameters that must be constantly checked by ceramic industry are particulate metal, fluorine, organic acids, nitric oxide, sulfur dioxide, chlorine, and last but not least, volatile organic compounds, 
aldehydes and formaldehydes. That said, we can surely declare that the use of water-based products within digital processes has shown a significant emission reduction of VOC, aldehydes and organic acids that usually impact on the air quality. And the reasons for these reductions are many, but two are the most significant. Let's start from the first of the two with a short introduction. Here we are. Ceramic kilns are primarily developed to reach the best firing conditions for the organic components of the tile. That means sands, feldspar, clays, etc. However, during the preheating phase, it also takes place the evaporation process and the partial decomposition of the organic materials of the ceramic body, including those of the glue. Once the evaporation process has started, during the preheating stage, in that area of the kiln where temperatures are not as high as those that are developed during the actual firing stage, organic molecules do not completely decompose, producing instead molecular intermediates. The molecular intermediates are free to move in the atmosphere of the kiln, easily reaching the chimney and therefore leaving the kiln, polluting the air. But the question is, what are the reasons for the decrease in emissions? The first reason is about the quantity. In fact, as we already said, water-based digital glues contain up to 50% less of that organic materials that are usually responsible for the pollution. And the second reason is more about quantity. In what way? Unlike non-polar solvent or solvent-based digital glues, the polar solvents and the organic substances within water-based digital glues are marked by a chemism, that is the set of chemical characters of a substance, that provide the glues with a better combustion process inside the kilns, that in most cases leads to an important reduction of the polluting components. In general, the reduction can range from 5 10,000 olfactometric unit equivalents to 1 2,000. That means up to 10 times compared to the solvent-based system. But what are olfactometric unit equivalent? It's a kind of measurement that is usually able to define the concentration of odors in the air, translating somehow a feeling in numbers. Just to give you a few parameters, the odor of the wet earth, for example, ranges from 60 to 150 olfactometric units while the order of wet waste ranges from 500 to 8,000. Or Swain Intensive Farms, I know it's a weird example, but it's useful, from 500 to 2,000. Or finally, oil products that ranges from 10,000 to 80,000 olfactometric units. All of this to say that in ceramic, the decrease from 5, 10,000 to 1, 2,000 is quite significant, and speaking about decrease from a chemical point of view, what is the mechanism that takes place? During combustion, the inorganic part of the glue, both particulate and not particulate, is fixed to the support. And this happens both with water-based and solvent-based digital glues. And then, while the non-polar solvents of solvent-based digital glues decompose in chemical compounds marked by very bad odors, the polar solvents, specifically developed and selected for water-based glues, produce, during decomposition, organic molecules, or molecular intermediates, marked by a high olfactory threshold. That means that the odors are detectable only in high concentrations. And now, we close this chapter by opening a new one and speaking about the technical and aesthetic features. First of all, the longer drainage time provided by water-based digital glues allows for a greater flexibility in terms of grid application. What does that mean? The special polymers used in water-based digital glues are able to reduce the glue's absorption by the ceramic support, increasing the drying times. This means that the grid machine can be placed in many different positions according to the parameters of the production line and more specifically in a longer distance than that normally used with solvent-based digital glues. And this 
even if it could seem not very significant, it's instead a quite important technological benefit. What happens technically? While with solvent-based digital glues, both polymers and solvents are equally absorbed by the support, with water-based digital glues, polymers tend to remain on the surface, therefore creating a sort of barrier. That is, the solvent is absorbed more than the cohesive resins, therefore increasing the drying times. Besides this benefit, and so we introduce now the second one, water-based digital glues are also able to promote a better printing definition. How do they do it? Let's say it by making a comparison, a simple comparison. Solvent-based digital glues, as well as all digital inks applied in large amounts, actually digital glues can be totally compared to inks, tend to expand on the ceramic support, leading to a loss of grit definition. As we have already pointed out, in fact, they are more rapidly absorbed by the support due to the equal capillary migration of the solvent and the cohesive polymers, not only inside the support, but also on the surface and their superficial spreading unavoidably leads to a loss of printing definition. What happens instead with water-based digital glues? It happens that the solvent, and primarily the water, tends to be rapidly absorbed by the support, but the cohesive polymers on the surface produce a sort of barrier avoiding the drainage of the glue's upper layers, and at the same time avoiding the expansions of the glues on the support. Those two actions finally turns into an improved definition of the grid that has been discharged. Another feature of the water-based digital glues, and this is the third and last benefit that I would like to point out, is surely the higher binding power. The solvents normally used in solvent-based digital glues can be considered as a sort of oil that reduces or, and this is obviously a paradox, even cancel the binding power of the glue. Why? The resins in solution remain basically solvated, that is, surrounded by the solvent that acts as a gap between the resins and the grid, preventing an intimate bound between the support and the grid itself. Instead, the binding power of the resins within water-based digital glues is, we could say, promoted by the water itself. And this means that, in this case, the, the maximum binding action occurs after the water evaporation process. What happened? Polymers and so cohesive resins, once they have lost the water content, bind together and with the ceramic support, strongly fixing the grid and therefore increasing the printing definition. The direct result of the different behavior of the two digital glues and of their different binding power and here is one of the most important benefits, is about the possibility to better manage, even simultaneously, high, medium and low amounts of grit. Solvent-based digital glues, due to their low binding power, do not correctly manage medium and low weight of grit. In this case, it should be necessary, in fact, an important amount of glue to ensure a good result. The high binding power of water-based digital glues instead helps and improves the simultaneous application of medium and low contents of grit, and this technical option clearly expands the possibilities in terms of creativity and development of the ceramic projects. With this last suggestion, even today we have come to an end. I would like to remind you once again that all the previous episodes are freely available not only on the main platforms but also, together with many other contents, on our app that you can download for free on Apple Store or Google Play. You just need to type Z and S Ceramco. C E R A M C O. So, I leave you with Silson and these colored fishes that, with their long and very elegant tails, quietly float in the water. See you soon.